Welcome to C3 San Diego. Need something fresh, real, and powerful in your life? Connect with us on social media, get live stream service notifications, podcasts, and up-to-date information on upcoming events. We are so glad you're joining us for a powerful, life-transforming message from one of our C3 San Diego pastors. We would love to hear about how God is impacting your life through this ministry. Please share your experience with us at info at c3sandiego.com. If you'd like to be a part of what C3 Church is doing in the city of San Diego and beyond, you can contribute financially by going to c3give.com and choosing the giving option that works best for you. We hope you enjoy this message. Sometimes we spend our whole life avoiding darkness. Avoiding it because it has power. Avoiding it because it's scary. Sometimes we live our whole life avoiding temptation. Like it's a disease. The moment you find yourself in a place where you're no longer tempted is a place where you find yourself no longer in your calling. Jesus gets led into the wilderness to be tempted. Live our whole life trying to avoid struggle, pain, heartache, difficulty. We find ourselves living a life with no purpose, no calling, Darkness is not something we are made to avoid. It's something that with God, we're made to tremble. So you're going to see at our church, it's Pastor Jurgen and Pastor Land. They're going to teach you how to storm hell, how to populate heaven how to bring heaven to earth. Live the life that God has intended for you to live. Don't settle for less. Don't settle for average. Let normal be your enemy. You're not born to be normal. You're not born to be just like everybody else. You were born to stand out and to stick out and to make a difference. In Jesus' name. Before you, you take your seat, our past senior pastors aren't, aren't here tonight. Uh, but just because they're not here doesn't mean we don't honor them. And I just want you to know that today uh, we fulfilled the original vision of C3 San Diego, which was one church in four locations. Today, with the launch of our East Campus, come on, somebody! The gates of hell shall not prevail. God is not done. This is not the church's final hours. It's our finest hour. This is a moment you were born for. This is a moment God's been waiting for. A church and a people to rise up and say, not on my watch. We're not done. We're just beginning. We are just beginning. Jesus' name. All right. Twelve more campuses. Let's do it. Thanks, guys. Come back in a couple minutes. I mean, you can stay if you want, if it's easier. Uh, but you're going to come back. Why don't you give somebody a high five? You can take your seat. Today is Freedom Sunday. Can I tell you the agenda tonight just so you understand where we're going some people want to understand where we're going uh where we're going tonight is is God is going to speak um and I thank him that he uses me to speak to you uh anybody who's up here is just a conduit and if they're not a conduit it's not God a conduit for God to speak through so that that's all it is I just want to get out of the way so that God can show up and do his thing and God is going to speak to you tonight in some areas of our world that we need to get free from. Some areas that have been ruling us, killing us, haunting us, hurting us. He's going to speak to us. And then we're going to give an opportunity for people to meet Jesus, to meet him. 
and let them move and set you free. Life is too short to live in bondage. So why don't we just pray tonight? God, I thank you that you're here. Your presence is here. God, move tonight. Breathe life into dry bones, into broken hearts, into crushed dreams. Breathe life. I thank you that you're the God that does exceedingly, abundantly above all that we can ask or think. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Why don't you open up your Bibles to Mark chapter 9. Mark chapter 9, verse 14. The title of my message tonight is Cut the Strings. Cut the Strings, starting in verse 14. And when he, capital H, anytime your phone tries to not capitalize God or Jesus, make sure you just auto-correct it. Just every time, just let it know. If we all do it enough, it'll just change it. They'll change it. They'll change it capital H, came to the disciples. He saw a great multitude around them and scribes disputing with them. Immediately when they saw him, all the people were greatly amazed and running to him, greeted him. And he asked the scribes, what are you discussing with them? And then one of the crowd answered and said, teacher, I brought you my son who has a mute spirit. And wherever it seizes him, somebody say wherever, wherever. it throws him down. He foams at the mouth and gnashes his teeth and becomes rigid. So I spoke to your disciples that they should cast it out, but they could not. He answered him and said, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I bear with you? Bring him to me. Then they brought him to him. And when they saw, when he saw him, immediately the spirit convulsed him and he fell on the ground and wallowed and foaming at the mouth. So he, this is Jesus, asked his father, how long has this been happening to him? And he said, from childhood. And often he has thrown him both into the fire and into the water to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us. And Jesus said, if you can believe, all things are possible to him who believes. Immediately the father of the child cried out and said with tears, Lord, I believe. Help my unbelief. When Jesus saw that the people came running together, he rebuked the unclean spirit, saying to it, deaf and dumb spirit, I command you, come out of him and enter him no more. Then the spirit cried out, convulsed him greatly, and came out of him. And he became as one dead, so that many said, he is dead. But Jesus took him by the hand and lifted him up, and he arose. And when he had come into the house, his disciples asked him privately, why could we not cast it out? So he said to them, this kind can come out by nothing but prayer and fasting. So I said the title of this message tonight is Cut the Strings. I actually brought a, a little friend with me tonight. And uh, so I just want you to see my, uh, my little buddy. I, uh, I'm a professional marionette man. Hands down, hands up. Hands down, hands up. Hands down. <laughs> Praise God. <laughs> Too cool for school. Love God. So, if you're if you're live streaming this, maybe, maybe you can zoom in or, but I mean. <laughs> so if anybody's looking to hire a puppeteer. I don't know if that's what you call me. Anyways, I brought this friend. I brought him, uh, and he, he's, it's, if, if you can't tell, is uh, I think Pinocchio or, or something similar to that. Uh, I, brought, I brought this to demonstrate as an illustration what I'm talking about tonight. We look at this, and it's funny, right? It, it's funny, but the reality, the reality is you and me are in this place or have been in this place. We've been just like this man right here. That the only thing is people can't see our strings. So when we walk, it looks like we're walking on our own. When we talk, it looks like we're talking on our own. Looks like we're doing everything on our own, but the reality is we're not. The reality is we're attached by strings. And I don't know what your string is, and it, it could be multiple things tonight. 
And that's what we're here to deal with. That's what we're here to talk about. That's what we're here to, to show you so, and identify so you can see what is that thing that's keeping you from living the life that God intended you to live. I don't know what your string is, me. Me, one of mine was pride. One of mine was insecurity. One of mine was, was lust, or one of mine was false humility, or one of mine was so many other things. In fact, the, the reality is I didn't have four strings attached to me. I wish it was four. But every finger of mine seemed to be attached by a string. Every toe, every leg, every hair of my head. I know it's not many, but every hair of my head. It seemed like at one point was attached by a string and I was not living the life that I knew God called me to live. See, well, what is it tonight? What's the thing that you got? Is it pride like me? Is it insecurity? Is it an addiction or lust? What is it tonight that is keeping you from living that life, fulfilling that dream, stepping into your calling? What is that thing? What's the thing that holds you back, that controls you? Tonight is all about identifying it and getting rid of it because that's what God wants to do. We see the story in the Bible that, that we read, and there's a story of a young boy who's attached by strings. A young boy whose dad brings him to Jesus and says, Jesus, my son, he needs your help. He needs a miracle. He needs something. Because often, often he's thrown, often he's controlled. And that's what it goes through, and we see this happening. See, do you know that the Apostle Paul writes about this too in Romans? He says, the things that I want to do, I don't do. The things that I don't want to do, I do. What is happening? He says, God, save me. Save me because the things that I know I need to do, the places I know I need to walk into, I walk away from the things that I shouldn't go, the places I shouldn't be at. I keep finding myself in that place. God, help me. The Apostle Paul, who wrote two-thirds of the New Testament, found himself attached to strings. And we see this boy. Because if you're thinking, man, it's not me, I'm good. The only person who wasn't was Jesus. The only person who was completely free, who didn't have to deal with, with junk, and even though he had to rebuke the devil, he had to overcome it, doesn't mean he wasn't tempted, he just didn't give in. He didn't give a place for the devil to put a string to his life. And we see this happening to the boy, and he says this, that every, every time or wherever, wherever the spirit grabs him, it knocks him down. It knocks him down. Right when he's about to do something, right when he's about to maybe play sports, right when he's about to have a great day, the spirit grabs him and knocks him down so he can't do anything he wants to do. Let me break it down for you. It's a little bit like this. Right when you're about to get the promotion, you don't. Right when you're standing over the toilet with the top of the pill cap taken off and you're about to dump it down the toilet and something happens and you don't. Right when you're about to have breakthrough, right when you're about to have a miracle, right when you're about to get that job, but it seems like every time, every interview seems good, but you never get it. Everything, you're, you're so close to it, but it never happens. As soon as you're about to obtain that dream that you have, you get knocked down again and again and again, wherever it seizes him. So if you wonder, do I have strings attached to you? Maybe that's you. Maybe you find yourself in that place. I just can't seem to break through. I just can't seem to have a miracle. I just can't seem to, to not look at that side on the internet. I just can't, can't seem to get rid of that thing, to get rid of that problem. I try. I pray. I read my Bible and it's still there. Wherever he is, it knocks him down. When life hits you is what we call it. That's not life. Nowhere in my Bible... Does it tell me that that is life? 
Nowhere in my Bible does it tell me that right before I get breakthrough, I get knocked down, right? Nowhere in my Bible does it tell me that I'm going to have to struggle with that thing all the time. Nowhere in my Bible does it tell me that I can't have blessing, that I can't have increase, that I can't have that promotion, that I can't have that healing, that I can't have that thing. Nowhere in my Bible does it tell me that. But yet we have labeled it as just life. That's just the way that it is. Some people, it's just unfortunate. It's not unfortunate, it's demonic. Jesus asked him, he says, how long has this been happening? He says, since childhood. In other words, his whole life. How long have you been dealing with that thing? How long have you been dealing with that pain? How many people, if I was to do a poll, I'm guessing it's a pretty big majority of us have been diagnosed with something when we were little. And the doctors told us it's just something we're going to have our entire life. Jesus says, how long has he had it since childhood? He's had it his whole life. He's never known a time without it. That's happening today. It's just disguised differently. It's disguised maybe in your eating disorder. It's disguised maybe in the bipolar disorder that you have. It's disguised maybe in that ADD or ADHD. It's disguised in so many other things. We have so many teenagers today. If I do a poll at youth and and ask how many people are taking a medication that a doctor told you you're going to have the rest of your life, you would be surprised at how many hands would go up. Because somebody told him, it's just how you are, it's just what you have, and you're going to have it your entire life. You're going to have to spend your entire life with this pill and this thing. If you want to live a normal life, you're going to have to take this the rest of your days. And we start believing that this is just the way that it is. How do I know it? Because even as I speak right now, some people, you don't even think it's you because you don't know a life without it. You don't know what it's like to live free. You don't know what it's like to wake up and not have to take that pill, to not need that, that, that insulin, to not need that thing. You don't know what it's like because you've grown so accustomed to that thing, it's become normal to you. And you disqualify yourself anytime the hands go up to pray for people who need healing. You don't even put yourself in the same category. You don't put yourself in that because to you it's normal. To me, it became normal. But tonight, it's all about cutting those strings and getting free from that issue. Getting free from that thing that's haunting us. Since childhood, and many of us have been told that same thing. It says this, often he's thrown into the fire or the place of pain. If you find yourself often in that place of pain, then maybe it's a string that you're attached to. You find yourself often in that place of getting wounded and getting offended and getting bitter. You find yourself often in that place. I prayed for a guy just this morning at North Campus. I said, what can I pray for? He says, I want the pain to stop. I want the pain to stop. And so I prayed with him for a few minutes. How many of you tonight are in pain? How many of you tonight are in that place where you're so tired you feel like often I'm thrown into the fire? In fact, you would maybe say that, I don't know, a life lived outside of the fire. I am constantly in pain. Maybe it's mentally, maybe it's spiritually, maybe it's physically. I don't know what pain you're in right now, but we see here that this little boy was often thrown into a place of pain. Also, he says, and often into the water, that place where you're always overwhelmed. That place where you constantly feel like you're drowning at work, at home, at life, in ministry, whatever it is that you're walking through. You feel like you're always in this place where you're overwhelmed. You don't want to be around people. You don't want to be in big crowds. You don't want to be around people that make you uncomfortable. You are always overwhelmed with this thing and you don't know what it is. And and the doctors will try to diagnose it and you're taking this thing and this medication and this prescription. And you're living your life medicated when you should be getting that thing eradicated. We're living our life. We're living our life below and not above all because we're in this place where we're overwhelmed and in pain and hurting and we're attached to these strings and I promise you you're not living that life that God intended for you he's got so much more for you he's got freedom for you 
He's got life and life more abundantly. That's the life. When people see the blessing and people see the increase and people see the life flourishing, that's when they should say, that's life. That's the life I read in my Bible. That's the life I see that Abraham lived and Isaac lived and Jacob lived. That's the life I see all throughout the Bible that people live, this life of freedom and blessing. The band can come up. But we got to get rid of the strings. We got to break free and break loose from all of those issues in our life. So maybe that's you. Maybe you feel like you keep getting knocked down. Maybe you feel like you're in a place of pain. Maybe you're one of those who's had it your entire life. And this is the first time you realize that it is not life. It is not normal. And it is not God. And today's the day. This is the moment where he wants you to get free. So what do we do? So those are kind of the signs, but you and I can get free from these things. Let me give you a couple things, and then we're going to pray for some people. The man comes to Jesus, and he looks at it and says, Jesus, if you can do anything, have compassion on my son. If you can do anything. And Jesus just looks at him. And I imagine it. He runs up to Jesus, desperate for him to do something. He says, if you can do anything, have compassion. And Jesus looks at him and says, if you can believe. How many times have we gone to Jesus and said, Jesus, if you can, if you will. And Jesus flips it right back at us and says, can you? We spend our whole life trying to figure out what the will of God is. Spend a whole life trying to figure out if God can have compassion or wants to have compassion or if it's will that you have healing or a miracle or breakthrough or freedom from that addiction or freedom from whatever that issue is. We spend a whole life trying to figure it out and we miss out. And every time God comes right back and says, can you, can you, can you, can you? Because it's not about if he's willing or not. It's not about if he's able or not. It's not about if he's big enough. It's about can we believe it? What does that even mean? Is it in my mind? Belief is not just in the mind. It starts in the mind. Belief has to overwhelm and you consume your entire being so that every fiber and every cell and everything in you just can't help but believe. I can't help but believe. I can't help but be optimistic. I can't help but believe that my best days are ahead of me, that God is for me and not against me. I can't help it. Can you believe? Because everything is possible when you believe. If you can, believe that he is ahead. Believe that you're above and not beneath. Beneath, Believe that greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world. Can you believe? Tonight when you walk forward, can you come? Not with a God if you can do anything. It doesn't impress him. It can't even move him. He wants to, but he's waiting to see stop. Stop asking if I'm willing and just believe. Believe. I believe. Believe for your family. Believe. Believe for your health. Just believe. His disciples come to say, hey, Jesus, how come we couldn't do what you just did? Jesus said, this one only comes out through prayer and fasting. Prayer and fasting. I don't know what you've been taught about praying. I don't know who's taught you how to pray or what you should pray. But what I know, there's a majority of Christians who are out there right now. I know there's some people who don't even in church, so you really don't know. But that's okay. You can learn the right way here. It's almost better to just to learn the right way than have to relearn and unlearn what you learn. 
I know there's some of you, 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 you've been told to pray prayers like, God, if it's your will. We've been taught to pray those things and ask God or plead with him or beg him for something. Or we sit in a circle and, and sing kumbaya and meditate and just with our eyes closed and just hope something happens. But that is not the prayer that I read about in my Bible. When Jesus says this one doesn't come out except through prayer and fasting, he is not talking about this somber, reflective, asking him to do something. He's talking about a prayer that brings heaven to earth, that engages the heavenly power, that commands that commands you have to take dear God out of your prayer language he is not your pen pal he is not somebody you write to to tell him how your day has been he is the mighty God he is the maker of heaven and earth he's the everlasting father he's the great I am he is not dear Lord he's my God when you pray, say, our Father who art in heaven, holy is your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation. For yours is the kingdom. And yours is the power. And yours is the glory forever and ever 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 come on yours it's in his name your will be done your kingdom come to break every chain break every chain break every You can stay standing, you can sit, I'm not actually done. <laughs> Fasting. Fasting. I love that, by the way. Thank you for being ready. <laughs> this is not the fast that I have chosen. It's not a diet or cleanse. I'm not going to go into it much. Pastor Jurgen, well, maybe you can ask your connect leader for the message that he preached on Wednesday to us about fasting, but, but change your world. Fasting breaks bondages. Tells your flesh who's boss. Tells your problem who's God. And maybe you're sitting in here tonight and you're like, oh man, I wish I would have known that, that everybody was fasting. I wish I would have known because this time only comes out and I didn't fast, so can I get my miracle tonight? And the answer is yes, you can. Yes, you can. Maybe, maybe not because you didn't fast, but I do know there's some people in here who did. And we've been fasting for us, but we've also been fasting for you. That tonight, the thing you've had for 40 years, the illness, the disease, the addiction, we've been fasting that that thing tonight, God's going to break it over his knee. So it's okay. If you know nothing about God, it's okay. Because we've been preparing for you. We've been preparing for you at home. While you're sitting there because you're too sick to get out or too depressed to get up. We've been fasting. This can be your time. This can be your moment. Last one is this. Last one is this. 
Jesus looks at him. Jesus looks at him. If you can do anything, tries to tell, this is how it is, but I love the words. The four words that Jesus says that changes everything. Your disciples couldn't, nobody could, doctors couldn't, physicians couldn't, counselors couldn't. Jesus looks at him and says, bring him to me. Bring him to me. So Jesus is holding him. He comes to Jesus and how many of us have lived that life? The message is all about cut the strings. So I'm not about to leave that thing still hung up. I'm not about to just leave it still operated by another force. Jesus says, bring him to me. See, how many of us, maybe tonight we can make a decision that instead of, instead of bringing him to a counselor, we can bring him to the wonderful counselor. Oh. Or instead of maybe bringing him to a doctor, we can bring him to the healer. Oh. Or maybe, or maybe instead of bringing him to that psychic, or maybe instead of just bringing him into the teacher, or to that person, or to that other authority, you can bring him to the name that's above every name. You can bring him to the great I am, to the mighty God, to the one who was and is and is to come. He's the one. He's my savior. He's the resurrected king. He's the name above all names. He's the one that will set you free. Cut the strings tonight. Get free. This is your moment. This is your opportunity. Listen to this, stay stand, everybody stand, everybody stand. The Bible says this, Jesus brings him to him, sets him free, and everybody looks at him as though he's dead. And we look at this, and some of us would have been the same people. He's gotta be dead. The reason that they thought he was dead is because they just got used to the pain. They got used to the bondage. They got so accustomed to the chains that they were shackled to. They get so accustomed to the pills, to the addiction. They get so accustomed to that torture, to the anger, to the other stuff that they forgot what freedom looked like. The boy was not dead. For the first time in his life, he was free. He was free. Maybe you forgot what freedom looked like. Today's the day where God's about to show you. God's about to cut your strings, to set you free, to loose the bonds of wickedness. That's the moment. This is your time. He falls down. And every other time it was by an evil spirit. But not this time. Some of us get freaked out when we lift our hands. He gets knocked down, but not by an evil spirit, by the Holy Spirit. And when the Holy Spirit knocks you down, he is always there just like Jesus was to pick the young boy up so that he could step into the first day of the rest of his life. This is your moment. This is your moment. This is your moment. This is your moment. Refuse to believe the lie that this is just the way that it is. My God paid too high a price for you to live that life. Everything got handled at Calvary. Everything got handled on the cross. He didn't forget some diseases. He didn't forget some illnesses. He didn't forget some addictions. He didn't forget some things. He didn't forget anything. He put everything under his feet. Ministry team, come up.
We're gonna do three things and then you're gonna come. First one is gonna change what we believe. So I want you to put your hand on your head. And I want you to say these words after me. Say, Lord, I believe. Second thing we're gonna do is we're gonna pray. We're gonna pray that freedom is gonna happen. And then right after I'm done praying, we're gonna do the third thing. And we're gonna bring it to Jesus. We're gonna bring it to Jesus. And you're gonna have to walk out of your seat. You're gonna have to come out. You're gonna have to drag somebody who you know needs to get free. The young boy did not show up to Jesus by himself. His daddy picked him up. His daddy dragged him. His daddy did anything and everything he could just to get the young boy to Jesus. The four men picked up a paralyzed man, opened up the roof of a house, and lowered him down. You got to sometimes do what is crazy to get your friends to Jesus. So we're going to pray. When I'm done, the, the team's going to sing. And I want you just to come. Whatever it is that's keeping you, whatever it is that is holding you, you're going to get set free from that thing tonight. So come on, I want you to lift your hands and lift your voices. And right now, we are going to declare. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. God, right now that your kingdom would come here. God, I thank you that you're going to set some people free. God, that this is the night where everything's about to shift, where everything's about to change. God, where you're going to loose the captives. God, where they're going to step into all that you have for them. God, right now, I thank you that you're creating people who are the head and not the tail, who are above and not beneath. So God, tonight, we command everything that is not of you to leave this place and that the Spirit of God would descend and let there be freedom, let there be breakthrough, let there be miracles in Jesus' name. Thank you so much for joining us online. We hope you had a powerful experience. We want to take this time to personally help you navigate the next steps in becoming connected. If you made a decision for Christ today, need prayer, or want more information about our church, go to our website, c3sandiego.com. And if you didn't get a chance to give online during service and would like to contribute financially, you can go to c3give.com and click on the giving option that works best for you. We look forward to hearing from you. See you at church.